My name is Emily Sandilands. I am the community builder here at Zing Train. I'm going to be your host today. I am thrilled to be here alongside our presenter, Ariana Tejas Leon. Hi, Ariana. Hello, thank you so much, Emily. Um, I am a trainer at Zing Train. Usually over on the south side of Nut Arbor, right, right now I am doing an example of remote work from my home office. So <laughs> I am very excited to kick off the webinar and bring you all in. I just cover a couple of uh, housekeeping oh, things. Yes. Oh, all good. No, no. I was, I was uh, really excited to see your pink background and your awesome, awesome sign back there. I'm just going to go cup over a couple of housekeeping things, and I'll turn it back over to you. Um, we are coming to you, as Ariana said, from all over Ann Arbor, Michigan today. But we would love to hear where you're tuning in from. So feel free to drop your location there in the chat box at the bottom of your Zoom screen if you want to open that up and shoot your location over to us. We'd love to see where you're coming from. All right, they're starting to come in. Chicago, a couple people from Chicago. Great, the UK, wow, welcome. Thanks so much, everyone. Keep those coming in. We'd love to, love to continue to see where you're coming from. Just to give you a quick rundown of how it's gonna to work today, we're going to talk for about 40 to 45 minutes. Ariana will present today. Uh, and then we're gonna have some time at the end of the presentation today for some Q&A. If you have questions, feel free to shoot them over to us in the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. So you are sending us the locations, so wonderful in the chat. Um, if you open up that Q&A box, you can send those to us. We're gonna to try to get to as many of them as we can uh, during, a, during the session today. Should we not get to your question, not to worry, we'll get back to you answers as soon as we possibly can. We are going to be recording today's webinar, very important. And we will be sending out the recording and the slides to you in the days to come. So be sure to look out for those in your email inboxes. And you know what, I think I'm ready to turn it over to you, Adiana, feel free to, free to take over here. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you so much. It's really fun to see there's Anchorage and then we have Peter in the Bertha bus. That's super exciting. Good to have you all here. Awesome. So here in the Zingerman's community of businesses, we have a habit of stopping ourselves periodically to ask what's working and what's not working. Usually this is during a big project to brainstorm for annual planning or after making a change or to help us celebrate our successes. And then it also helps us continuously improve to make things better. In March, Zing Train underwent the big surprise change from 100% in-person seminars and working in an open concept office to 100% virtual workshops and working remotely. If you had asked me in February, I would have said that Zingtrain would never be a remote work job because our teamwork and our work with the customers is so dependent on interacting face-to-face -face and in person. What surprised me in answering these two questions was the answer to the first question. Even though we needed to develop a whole new way of communicating with each other and our trainees, a lot of our systems held up and kept working. There were of course systems that I had taken for granted when we were in person and leaning into those basics helped us to continue and progress through the changes to keep our business going virtually. They fall under three key beliefs that energy is essential. Our personal energy, whether we're trying to be creative on our own, brainstorming via Zoom, or trying to turn out virtual school in the background has a real effect on our work. That meetings are not more fun virtually than they were in person. So let's not spend any more time in them than we absolutely have to. And let's use the seven steps to effective meetings. Also taking time to appreciate each other is even more important now that we're not working side by side. We're not having those casual conversations over lunch, not offering to pick up coffees on the way to the meeting or bringing in surprise cookies when we've made them over the weekend. So all of these, we've kind of distilled down into these key beliefs. And then I'm excited to share some tools with you on how to improve and make this work better. 
Note that these apply whether you're working with your coworkers or with your customers as well. So you can keep that in mind as we go. I'd like you to think, what is working or not working for you as we go through? We will have a Q&A at the end. And at that point, I would love to hear and answer your questions. Also, keep note of any tips that have worked really well for you, because I'd love to hear some of them as well at the end. So let's dive in with energy is essential. We learned from Anise Kavanaugh, who wrote Contagious Culture, that we have three different kinds of energy. Physical energy, which is influenced by sleep, caffeine, food, exercise, all of those things um, that change how we physically feel. We have mental emotional energy, which is influenced by stress or meditation, prayer, music, hanging out with friends or family, whether that's in person or probably more remote right now. We also have vibrational energy. This is the energy that we project that other people can read off of us. Most people make an instantaneous judgment on other people's energy or emotions is another thing that comes to mind. And part of the reason that we experience Zoom fatigue is that our brains are constantly searching for this energy information and having a really hard time figuring out remotely. We also know from Anise Kavanaugh's work that the overall energy of an entire organization depends on the energy of the people who work within that organization. If the folks in the organization have high energy, then that will read through. Customers will be able to tell from little things like how people answer the phone or greet customers or talk with their coworkers. On the other hand, I'm sure you as a customer have at some point walked into an organization where it's obvious that none of the staff want to be there and that negative energy kind of washes over you. The challenge with the virtual work is that our energy is still contagious, but it's more likely to be misinterpreted remotely. For example, I have two monitors, and if I spend my entire meeting looking at my screen over here, then you all might interpret it as like I'm not engaged, or maybe I'm catching up on British Bake Off, but you wouldn't necessarily know, even if I have really high energy, that I'm fully engaged with whatever notes or documents we're working in. And it's even harder to measure this energy if everyone's video is off. And then on top of that, with our energies, we're missing out on those positive coworker energies. Um, I can no longer run over to Singerman's coffee and get a little coffee and chat with some of our friendly barista friends over there. Instead, that has been replaced with a sharp increase in general pandemic anxiety and brand new daily challenges that really bring our energy down. Fortunately, we can take action and employ some of our favorite tips from our service training. For physical energy, we can, of course, take breaks. There are so many articles on taking breaks online right now. My very favorite is from Psychology Today, which basically says any break is better than no break. So you really can pick whatever works for you. I personally love the 20-20-20 rule. This is for eye strain, that every 20 minutes, you want to look at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds. There are even apps that you can download for your computer that actually like pop up a little reminder to give your eyes a break from the computer. For mental and emotional energy, anything that reduces stress helps here, including setting boundaries. When do you start work? When do you stop work? I don't know about you, but I find myself like thinking about work much longer throughout the day now that I don't have a commute home. We're also finding across Sing Train that it's really easy for us to overschedule ourselves. And we're trying to remind each other that saying no is really effective and is honestly great service to ourselves, our coworkers, and our customers in the long run. For vibrational energy, our very favorite rule, the 10-4 rule. This comes from our service class and it works wonders. If you don't know the 10-4 rule, in person, it works that at 10 feet away, we make eye contact and smile. And at four feet, we verbally greet. We have changed this to six feet uh, for social distancing for now, but it really does work virtually. Over the phone, 
it's a matter of when you pick up the phone, not trying to write an email and answer the phone at the same time. It's giving your full attention to the person on the phone. As people join virtual meetings, even if you're talking, give a little wave, welcome in, send a little chat. We even at Zingtrain use it in Google Docs. So as we're filling out notes, um, say Mara and I both happen to be working in a document at the same time, we'll put little like, hi Mara, how's it going? Notes to each other, smiley face emojis. And it really does do a nice boost of energy to see someone else, even though we're in completely different buildings, to be able to know, hey, there's someone else working at the same time as me, sending a little joy over. It's also scientifically proven that a smile, even a fake smile, releases endorphins to your brain to make you feel better. And we, it works in our meetings as we try and bring our energy up and share it with folks in the room. Speaking of which, let's dive into the elements of an effective meeting. We try to follow these at every Zingerman's meeting and teach them in our open book management training. We have a whole separate webinar in our ICAFs archives on this. So these are the quick highlights, but if you'd like to learn more, then we definitely have more information for you. First, please have a purpose and an agenda. If you can't think of a purpose for the, for the meeting, think, could this be an email instead? I have definitely caught myself a couple of times wanting to get a meeting together and realizing I could just CC three people and we could figure this out right now. We also have Slack for those quick questions to pull the group for a quick answer. Another important thing to note, does everyone need to be there? Does it need to be a whole team meeting or just the people who need to work on the project? Once you know what your purpose is, communicate that to everyone. Write an agenda so that folks stay focused and on topic. Bonus points if you give people a chance to add in their own hot topics to bring up and ask for help from the group. Second one snacks encouraged. We have found that meetings go way better with coffee in particular. In person, we eat during our meetings and drink coffee, water, whatever. Um, and we do the same thing virtually, but even better because you can turn on mute when you're eating chips. If I spend the whole meeting thinking about that LaCroix waiting for me downstairs in the fridge and those Cheez-Its that I just bought, I won't be much use in the meeting. So I might as well have them up here and concentrate on the meeting. Assign roles. Who's leading? Who's keeping time? Who's screen sharing the spreadsheet? Me or you? Maybe we could decide before the meeting starts. Um, who's taking notes especially speaking of which actually take notes this helps keep us accountable in the moment and to share later we want to write down all the to-dos that come out of the meeting who's doing it and by when another thing that really helps with the energy in particular is getting all the voices in the room we have an icebreaker at the beginning of every meeting even though we of course know each other and it helps us to share our energy. We actually share energy on a scale of zero to 10, where zero is like detrimental energy and 10 is super rocking, which there haven't been a ton of 10 since the pandemic, but that's okay. When we're in person, I cannot wait for everyone to be a rocking 10. In person, we did try to come up with really clever questions for our icebreakers that pertain to the meeting or were really effective getting something done. Nowadays, my favorite icebreakers are when we just do something funny and get everyone's everyone smiling and everyone's energy up. If you want a really funny one, try asking how people do toothpaste on their toothbrush. Do they put the water first or the toothpaste first? This is extremely controversial. Next, we want to end on a high note. We end all of our meetings with appreciations to remind us how grateful we are to be working for each other, to be able to work at Sing Train. And it's a lovely boost of inspiration before we go back to work and everything else we need to accomplish for today. And the follow-up is essential. We want to send out those meeting notes, check in on the to-dos in the next meeting too. Nothing's worse than having to do the same meeting twice because you don't remember what happened in the last one. And when you capture the to-dos and go over them in the next meeting, check in to see if the person needs help, if they need more time, or celebrate when things are done. 
we really believe that appreciations are powerful, which is why we put them into our meetings, of course, but we want to keep practicing them. I don't know anyone right now who is feeling over appreciated. So if we can work on some really tangible uh, ideas for how to practice appreciations, and we'll all share those with you now. Let's start with assuming positive intent. If I start to think that my coworker is being intentionally difficult, maybe from that example earlier of like looking off into the distance instead of at the meeting where you don't know if I have two monitors or not. If I'm trying to look for reasons that someone's being difficult, I will probably prove myself right. I will find that evidence. We know this from our belief action cycle. Instead, why don't we try to start with a positive belief? Zingtrain's founder, Maggie Bayless, reminded us back in May that probably no one is doing their best work in the middle of a pandemic. And we can all give each other a break. We can help each other out, offer help, ask for help, and that will really help. This belief action cycle, basically, because it, it, it's cyclical and shows that if we have negative beliefs, it'll probably get a negative outcome. On the other hand, if we have positive beliefs, it's more likely to be a positive outcome. And by practicing appreciations, we can then find more evidence that we are all fantastic colleagues who are working really, really well together. It, some different ways that we practice appreciations are out loud in meetings, whether that's just a couple of us in a meeting or the whole team meeting, as I mentioned before, ending on appreciations really, really works. It's also written appreciations, whether that's sending a quick email, um, little appreciations in Slack, or the extra fancy version of actually writing a note and emailing it out to someone. We have also taken time to do some virtual lunches where we intentionally schedule time to um, work together, whether and like casually, pardon me, we want to like casually create opportunities to work together. Um, another way we do this is getting on a team meeting earlier. So in Slack, we'll actually send messages saying, hey, I'm going to open this meeting early. If anyone wants to stop by, um, then we can just chat, catch up in order to have a much better meeting. All of Ari's books actually have something about appreciation. So, and we also have a link to a, a article that he wrote. If you want to build a culture of appreciation, it has a lot more things. And I realized that I did not quite go through belief action cycle. So I'm gonna go back through this really quick. So if we start out with the belief that our coworker is being a little bit difficult or potentially not engaged, then that will influence our actions. So we're going to start looking for that evidence that they're not engaged. Maybe we'll pose questions in a way that's not necessarily helpful um, or get on people's case is another thing that I know I've been attempted or been tempted to do like, hey, why haven't you done this yet? Um, what that then does is influence the other person's belief about us. If I see someone who's writing out, hey, did you do this? Hey, did you do this? I'm going to get more irritated. And as a stubborn person myself, I might reply more slowly, which will then of course influence that idea that I'm being in dif difficult or not engaged, which will go back and confirm the original belief of being difficult. And I think a lot of times I especially know that I'm waiting for the other person to change their behavior. So then um, only then would I be willing to change my belief. Instead, if we are able to focus on a positive belief and go into it saying, okay, I know that this person really wants to get this project done on time, as do I. I go in with my action of offering help. Hey, is there anything that I can do for you? 
uh, today before we work on this project tomorrow. That will then confirm their belief, hey, this person is trying to help me, is trying to get the project done too. We really can be a team and work together, which will influence their action of responding. Maybe they'll even say, hey, you know what? I've had a really, really hard day. And um, is it possible for us to reschedule the meeting, whatever that might be? That's then going to confirm my belief. Oh, of course, they're trying really, really hard. Of course, the you know they have a lot going on, and it really changes the caliber of any conversations we're having. It's not magical, but at the same time, the only power that we have is in between our belief and our action. No matter what our real belief is, we can choose an action that is based on positive intent and that will help us. It's basically impossible to get a positive belief, a positive outcome out of a negative belief. On the other hand, it's really good chances that we'll get a positive outcome when we start with positive beliefs. The last element of appreciations is appreciate yourself as well, especially when we're not in an office surrounded by people coming in with smiles and little small appreciations all day long. Internal monologue. I invite you to explore how you talk to yourself when you're working on a project, trying to get done by a certain time of the day. Are you using kind language or are you saying, come on, man, why didn't you, why didn't you do this earlier? You knew this project was going to take a long time, man, dummy, whatever it is. It's reminding ourselves to, to speak kindly with ourselves. Another technique here is instead of saying, I should have dot, dot, dot. Um, I should, I've heard is defined as could, but with shame. Sometimes we feel like there's all of these shoulds floating around. If we can change that to a choice, as opposed to someone else's judgment of should using the choice of could, it feels a lot better that I should work on this project from 9 to 11 p.m. tonight so it can be done tomorrow is very different from I'm choosing to get ahead on this project so that I can have an easier day tomorrow or I'm going to get this done tonight, Friday night, so that I'm not coming back to it on Sunday before the meeting on Monday. Asking for help too. This is something that can be really difficult, especially when we know that our coworkers are also overloaded with their work. But in some cases, if we just put it out there, there are many times um, my coworker Joni and I have had this conversation where I've said, Joni, I really need help with this project on Monday. And she'll say, that's awesome because I need help with a project on Tuesday. And we can switch. I'm There are some things that are just easier for me than other people and vice versa. So let's make it easier on ourselves. Honestly, every time that I've asked for help, it's ended up being a benefit to someone else as well. Every time that I'm afraid to ask for help, that's when I get really straight, stressed, procrastinate, and things get really hard. Finally, find ways to extra mile yourself. Uh, can you pack your lunch ahead of time? I like to keep chocolate in my desk drawer so that in the middle of a meeting, I have a, a little snack waiting for me. Um, finding little ways to schedule break times. Can you put something on your calendar, 15 minutes to do nothing? Or my coworker Elnina and I the other day, we scheduled ourselves an hour and a half meeting, only worked for the first hour, and then took the second half an, or that last half an hour as a lovely break um, to have a little extra time before we had a training later that day. So those little things, if you can give yourself a break, um, another really great way is to to take those breaks is to take a moment to do your appreciations for other people. So finding those little small ways can make a big difference. At this point, so we've covered kind of quickly these three elements here. I would love to know what are some of the questions that you have about how these work? Yes, can you see me? Yes, I can. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, there I am. Okay. 
Um, yes, we've got some, we've got some great questions. People feel free to drop in some of your tips into the chat, as well as any questions you may have. Um, but we have a few that have come in. Um, one question from Stephanie, which I thought was great is, can you suggest some good icebreakers for folks who know each other well? And I know you mentioned the toothpaste one, I don't know, which I thought was fabulous. That was very memorable to me as well. Um, do you have others? Yes. Well, one pattern that we've noticed is sometimes, um, in a casual conversation earlier in the day. Um, before a meeting, we'll be talking about whatever random things, and that's where our best icebreakers come from. Um, for example, when we, uh, my coworker Elnine and I were eating apples, and we both had very different way of eating apples, so we thought, oh, this will be a great icebreaker. Like just finding little random things about each other, um, I think they can be a really fun way. There was, uh, I think we've had conversations about uh painting the walls behind us and what color would we choose uh i did not choose pink but you know that's an interesting conversation to know yeah. um yeah emily there, or mara there are a couple of others here uh what's your favorite quick work from home lunch uh that's good that's good for ide ideating giving people some ideas favorite thanksgiving side dish for those of us who celebrate thanksgiving um on our Monday morning meetings, we like to think of a positive uh, future with the icebreaker. What are you most excited about this week? Or what was a highlight from your weekend? Looking back on the weekend, is there a couple of others that I can think of? But if anybody if anybody does icebreakers in their organization and wants to drop some ideas in the chat, we, we always love to get more. I think you can also let to share, we, we have a site somewhere that's like a hundred or different icebreakers, but I think um, any little things that pertain particularly to your team, we have a lot of people who like to bake and so asking questions about that or it's it's noticing those little small things that make people smile. Yeah, we had another suggestion come in that says when I taught school I'd ask what was the second best thing that happened yesterday, which I love because it gets you to think of two, two great things that happened. Nice. Yeah, which I love. Great. Um, can you suggest some ways uh, to recognize others or offer a prize without any monies? Yeah, that, so recognize people. So like, uh, so little rewards for folks that aren't money. Um, you, let's see. So I do want to clarify really quick the difference for us between appreciations and then uh, rewards because we we do draw the line. Appreciations, those are calling out something specific and timely about a person. So I specifically appreciate Mara because she introduced some music at the beginning of our webinar that was a lovely little dance break. So we want to pick something um, that the person did recently that we really appreciated that could either be to benefit us or the business. We also do um, little rewards for each other as well, though I think we've been doing more appreciations uh, since we're remote. When we were in person, we did a lot more what we call extra miles for each other. So this comes from the three steps to giving great service, where um, I would bring Emily an iced tea because I know her favorite iced tea from um, the coffee company right across the street. Yeah. But yeah, I think a lot of, yeah, I think it's a little harder, especially if we're all working remote, um, but thank you cards can be a really fantastic little extra mile. Um, any others come to mind, Mara or Emily? Non-monetary rewards. We like, we often would translate like non-monetary rewards as those extra miles. Okay. Um, Very synonymous. Yeah. yeah, our our boss, uh, managing partner, Katie Frank, she has periodically baked some cookies and dropped them off at our houses. We also did a really fantastic social distance outside uh, celebration um, and there were Reese's Cups involved, which is everyone's favorite uh, candy. That's a Reese's Cup. Yeah, thank you cards sent to homes. That's a really 
it's a really lovely one to like actually get some snail mail. Yeah, lovely. Okay. Yeah, any other ideas folks have, feel free. They are coming in here. Um, oh, Brandon said they've created a feedback channel on Slack after Zingerman's training that last year where they track codes. Um, oh, fantastic. Specific team member appreciations there, which I love. We're, we're now using Slack too. We were before this, I know we were. Uh, not on Slack as much, so this is great. Yeah, we've got ideas coming in all over the place. Thank you, everyone. Keep sending those. Um, oh, yeah, I like that. The thank you email also copied to the person's boss. That's that's awesome, especially for work-related appreciations. Yeah. All right, so I know that there are, with the holidays coming up, um, more Zoom happy hour meetings. Uh, how do you feel? There's a question here. How do you feel about large uh, group happy hour Zoom meetings? And what's the best way to moderate that with more than two dozen people so they don't talk over one another? Yes, a, a really fun thing would be to try and do some breakout groups. Um, Zoom now has a feature where you can allow people to choose their own breakout groups. So you could um, have like a couple of conversation topics and send people in, mix them up. It would involve a little more planning on the front end, but I think it would be really fun. I know um, a couple of of big meetings that happen within Zingerman's, there have actually been like at the beginning for the icebreaker, instead of having everyone just talk to the whole group, they've divided folks out and then come back and shared and doing a little uh, breakout group, say at the beginning, in the middle and at the end. So people have that chatting time. Um, that's something that we've tried and it seems to be working pretty well. That's great. Okay, so we have another question here that says, uh, my team is working remote um, and with the holidays just around the corner, many of them are very COVID fatigued, which I know many of us are. Um, I wish I could give them all an extra day off to recharge, but I can't. What do you recommend to give a jolt of energy? Oh, this is a great question. Um, I think it could be, if, if you don't use appreciations already, it could be really nice. Um, there's an idea, it actually came from U of M, a uh, group that we were working with. Oh, Emily, you might know more about this than me, of sugar cubes, uh, where you write out little notes of positive things that you notice about people. And then, um, they get mixed up and and sent out. So I would essentially receive an email that had like a whole bunch of little things, um, little fun appreciations. Yeah. Uh, interactive activity. I think that, yeah, Rachel, that sounds like a really fun way. The only thing I would encourage is uh, adding another meeting um, isn't everyone's idea of a lot of fun, especially if people are really feeling the, the like extra stress of trying to get everything done before the holidays. But if you could designate part of a meeting that already exists to do something fun, um, that might be really nice, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, we've had a lot of, lot of fabulous uh, suggestions coming in the chat. So I just wanna see if I can Pull up a couple to share with the group here. Um, all right. So a non-monetary idea from Amy. Uh, LinkedIn recognition. I know you mentioned this, Ariana copied. Uh, thank you notes copied to the person's boss, postcards. Um, let's see what else we have here. We sometimes, oh, Elizabeth says, we sometimes host 20 minute games. One of the ones that's a fun is a rock, paper, scissors tournament for teams or on teams or on Zoom, which I love that idea. Rock, paper, scissors or some kind of fun some kind of fun game tournament. We've also done, um, we've had, I don't, we haven't actually done this, but we've really thought about doing a, a show and tell. Um, one of our coworkers' husbands uh, offered or maybe threatened that he would do a bassoon concert for us, um, which would definitely be exciting and fun. I love that. Love that. Yeah, some interesting, it's so interesting too when you learn things about your colleagues uh, that you didn't know before. 
So that, that would be one of them, the bassoon, the bassoon concert. Um, okay, so someone asked here, can you talk more about should being could with shame? I know you said that and it was kind of like, whoa. Can you talk a little bit more about this? Absolutely. So this is um, thinking to that internal monologue um, and how we talk to each other. So there are a couple key phrases. There's the I should. There's also um, if you hear yourself saying I can't, that uh, is definitely something worth exploring. I can't do this. Um, can have a real impact on our momentum or energy to do a project. So rephrasing as what I can do is, and trying to think of like, what, what can you do as opposed to taking that one I can't and having it really stop you from moving forward. Another one similar to should is have to. I have to get this done. It removes all of the choice from the matter. And there is always a choice. There are certainly consequences for making certain choices. Um, if I don't do this project on time, then it might have an effect on customers, coworkers, whatever it is. But if we can instead talk about, um, not that I have to, but I'm choosing to, it can feel a lot, a lot better. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, feel free, whoever asked that, feel free to let us know. Hopefully we touched on that. Yes, there. this is actually covered in the um, Mindful Self-Management Workshop. So we have a ton more information and um, Ari does have a whole book and a, there are a lot of uh, blogs uh, and articles on the Zing Training website with more answers. Yeah, Mara, if you don't mind dropping the link to that, maybe that workshop into the book, that would be great. Um, into the chat there for folks. We have a couple of other ideas here, which I love. Heather says, uh, we sometimes do pet show and tells, which I know we had one with your cat just before this started, Ariana. Yep. So, so fun, that, that's a big one. It can be a fun way to get to talk about something important to you, your pet, and share with others to connect, which I thought was really great. Another one is I've heard of remote workers giving home tours to each other so that everyone can see the remote work environment. It sounds like a fun idea. And they've asked if we've tried this and we have. We have tried this, but we'd, we'd love to hear if other people um, have tried that as well. Okay, another question here. Do you have a way to tactfully get engagement from participants in meetings that want to keep their camera off and not show any engagement after the icebreaker? These would probably be the same people that might roll their eyes at the icebreaker question. Yes, certainly. Um, so I was, we were reading an article um, by Wayne Baker, which I will uh, maybe look up and send in the follow up about, um, it was gentle, gentle mandatory uh, participation, GMP. And it was finding ways to get people to interact um, making interaction mandatory, but not necessarily invasive. Like if, if someone's trying to manage their kid at the same time, like it, it's understandable um, that they may not be able to have their video on, but finding key points within the meeting where we ask everyone to have their video on or ask everyone to engage. It doesn't have to be the whole meeting, but maybe it is the icebreaker and maybe we do a brainstorm brainstorms for us are a huge energy boost and what we do for those is we have a topic and we have a time limit and we want to get as many ideas out as possible um definitely going for quantity over quality and so if we're going to do a brainstorm we would definitely encourage people to either have their videos on or type into chat and i think um not making everything mandatory, but picking particular elements and letting people know in the agenda, we would like your videos to be on for this section. Um, for, I, I myself as am an introvert, for introverts too, it can be really difficult to talk with the whole group. And so I again, encourage you to do small groups where we pose a question, send people into groups of maybe three, four max, and then have everyone come back and have one reporter read back the answers. That can help people to feel a little more uh, more comfortable with engaging without feeling on the spot 
um, it can be really intimidating to, to stare at like a, a field of Zoom boxes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Mara just, Mara just dropped something in the chat, which was a great uh, point of feedback from Brandon about uh, the question about energy. He said, we recently had a virtual team mini retreat during part of, uh, part of which everybody shared one thing they'd been struggling with during the pandemic and working from home, if they found anything that helped them to work through it. And lastly, any silver linings that came out of COVID. I was delighted to hear how personal and vulnerable everybody was in sharing. Um, I felt like we all connected and related at a time when opportunities to connect are limited and learn some things that were helpful, some tips that are helpful, which is really great. Uh, Courtney has also said, we're also working on setting up midday walking groups in 3D, quote unquote, for folks who are in similar locations to encourage folks to be active and get fresh air and connect with each other. I know that here in Ann Arbor and in Michigan and anybody who's around this area knows it's getting colder. So we're, <laughs> we're investing in warmer clothes and heaters and all kinds of things to keep, to keep those three, 3D walks happening. Um, so wonderful suggestions. Yeah. So, um, Anybody has any other questions, we can be sure to get those, those asked. I know Mara dropped in a couple of resources that Ariana had mentioned, including a discount code, Community 2020, for 25% off. Yes, all I can show you that. Over on um, thingtrain.com, so be sure to use those. Um, and if you have any other ideas that come through, feel free to send them our way and we can share them in the follow-up, which you all will get with the recording and slides. But there have been a really just a lot of great ideas, so thank you everyone for sharing. Yes, like it, I think well, these have all been really, really helpful. And I think it's also really nice to realize that there are so many people experiencing the same struggles right now. I think we, we can figure out together, we can find different ways to connect. Um, but I think for me, it really helps to realize that like, I'm not the only person who's struggling with it. Zing Train's not the only business who's struggling with it. The other thing too that I wanted to remind you is we all have a ton of work to do and don't try and pick all of these to change. If icebreakers, if you feel like that's going to really boost your meetings, then choose a couple of icebreakers. Another fantastic way to get the eye roller uh, person involved is ask them to come up with an icebreaker. Uh, that might, might uh, be engaging and fun. Um, and yes, any of these 10 for rule, pick one little thing, try it out, uh, and, and let us know how it goes. It'd be wonderful to hear from you, uh, how these are working for you. Um, we have more resources that I mentioned. We have, uh, lots of articles on ZingTrain, and then we have all of our webinars in the archives on ZingTrain. So if you want to learn more about meetings or a culture of appreciation, there's lots of information there. And then we are having a kind of a whole day workshop, Intentional Leadership on December 9th, where we're all going to get together and talk about leadership and how that's going to look in 2021, not just from the top leadership level, but recognizing that all of us are leaders. So, so we'll get together and, and learn a little bit more about stewardship and servant leadership. And if you have any questions, or again, if you have any other great tips you'd like to share, please email us at Zingtrain at zingermans.com. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to point out too that in the intentional leadership, um, we send you a box of Zingerman's treats uh, with your registration. I always like to say that because I, I'm, I'm one of, for one, I'm very motivated by food. Um, I think we've talked about this. You thought we were talking about that earlier. So um, yes. And the early bird is going on until November 27th, I believe. So it's a hundred dollars off registration for that as well. Wanted to share just a couple of, um, additional ideas. I was recently reading in anticipation of our, our webinar here today about some tips that I learned. Um, the first is to shut down your workstation at the end of the day. It's something I don't always do. Um, but if you're wherever you're working to kind of clean the area up, do it very intentionally about shutting, shutting windows down and getting things um, going with that. The other is the commute time, which is something, you know, my, my commute used to be 15 minutes. Now it's 15 seconds. Um, but to do some deliberate commute time. Um, and that was usually a time to, you know, get on the phone, call, call a family member, call a friend, maybe listen to a podcast or some music that you love. So now I'm going for a 15 minute walk um, to start my day to kind of get that 
get that time in before I go. So I just wanted to throw a couple of my ideas in there before we finish things off here. Um, and I think I'm going to close it out. So thank you, everyone. As Ariana said, feel free to send any questions along to zingtrain at zingermans.com. Questions, ideas, uh, we can include those in the follow-up. And uh, expect to get the recording and the slides here in the days to come, probably in the next 24 to 48 hours. So get them in your inboxes. And if not, they will live on our website forever and ever, and you can access them there anytime. Yes, so. thank you. Thank you all. This is a wonderful energy boost. Uh, and I deeply appreciate being able to talk with all of you. And thank you, Emily and Mara. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your day.